What is up guys? Welcome to our second upload of the day. <laughs> yeah, about that. Uh, to be straight up with you guys, uh, I've been working graveyard shifts and it's really been affecting my sleep schedule and I slept through the entire day yesterday. Uh, didn't get to get this second upload done, so I'm doing it now and I'm getting it to you guys uh, decently early in the morning today on Monday. And this is our NPL Miners playoff match versus Poke Rob. Uh, not Poke Rob, Rob Jr. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm still tired as you can see. Uh, Rob Jr. or Poke TCG Gamer 1288. That's why I said Poke Rob, by the way. Uh, and uh, his monstrous team. Let's go over what he has. He has Mega Gardevoir, Terrakion, uh, Tornadus Therian, Nido Queen, Scizor, Slowbro, Hydreigon, Swellow, Golurk, uh, Ditto, Crawdont, and Quillfish. Uh, and you guys know our team. Now, last time that we faced, which was week three, I believe. Uh, he brought Mega Gardevoir, Terrakion, Nidoqueen, Scizor, Slowbro, and Hydreigon. So I expected a similar team to what he had initially brought, and uh, I prepared in consequence. So this is the team that we're bringing. So this time my Necrozma, instead of being a Charge Beam set, which is what it was last time, brought Psychic, Hidden Power, Bug, Moonlight, and Calm Mind. So with a couple of Calm Minds up, I can definitely take Hydreigon's hit, uh, hits, especially with the Culber Berry. Uh, this is also there for the... Uh, for the Crawdont, in case it wants to knock me off. I outspeed any non-Jolly uh, variant of Crawdont because of this 210 speed, and I also outspeed any uh, Jolly variant of, sorry, non-Jolly variant of Scizor. So, uh, this is the set that we're working with. Uh, if a Scizor is only rocking U-turn as a super effective coverage move for me, I get to uh, Calm Mind up on it every time, Moonlight, and Psychic is going to do a lot of damage. So, as long as he's not running anything with Toxic, we should be fine with this set. Next up, we have OG Hypnotoad, the Acelgore, uh, Focus Sash. This did a lot of work to him last time, and I'm hoping it'll put in a bit more work this time as well. Uh, Bug Buzz, Focus Blast, which we missed last time, uh, U-Turn, and Hidden Power Fire. As you can see, I'm negative defense nature. This uh, 20 investment right here is to uh, do a little bit more damage to his Eye Dragon, his Mega Gardevoir, his, uh, his Slowbro when I U-Turn out. Hidden Power Fire is there for the Scizor, of course. Uh, I was able to catch it last time with Hidden Power Fire on Necrozma, but this time I'm packing it on a Selgor because, in theory, Scizor should be a safe switch in to uh, a Selgor. But yeah. Uh, anyway, next up we have uh, this is a pretty standard set, guys. The speed on here, by the way, I didn't talk about the speed. Uh, the speed on here is to outspeed a uh, Swellow, a max speed Swellow, because I, I looked at that thing and I'm like, that thing is extremely threatening to my team, and I don't want to have to deal with it. So let me just focus Blast at turn one if I can, if it leads off, and uh, we'll deal with it that way. And that'll bring it down to U turn range. Next up, we have Redithan, the uh, Rotom Heat. So I brought this set last time. This is to deal with not only his Mega Gardevoir, but also his Scizor. Uh, I can deal with his Slowbro to some extent, thanks to Pain Split. I've got Will-O-Wisp on there, so I can burn the Scizor. Uh, Volt Switch and Overheat, of course. A pretty standard set. I'm rocking a uh, an almost max but F variant. I'm also running 8 speed on here, once again, to hit that 210 speed. Same speed that Necrozma hits. I just highlighted everything. Why, why did it do that? All right. Uh, but yeah, that's it's a pretty basic set. Next up, we have Diglett Dreams, the Flygon. Now, this is probably the most important set, guys. Last time I brought a Flygon that could deal uh, with a lot of members on his team. It was faster than his Gardevoir speed creeping my Kyurem. Uh, it had U-Turn on it for the uh, for the Hydreigon. Uh, it had Earthquake and it had Defog. I ran a, um, a defensive set so that I wouldn't get O-Code by a Banded Terrakion. And I also ran um, Roost on that set with Defog. So that was basically my set, uh, very simple set, and this time I'm running Dragon Dance because Dragon Dance has proved to put in a lot of work. Now the only pr problem with Dragon Dance is that I can't hit the entirety of his team. I've got Earthquake and Outrage, but unfortunately if I lock myself into Outrage, either Scizor or his Mega Gardevoir come in and revenge me. So that's why I have the Dragonium Z, and it's there uh, for the Tornadus as well because that thing's off the ground, and if I don't have to lock myself into Outrage against it, then perfect. So, that's, it's pretty basic. U-Turn is on here. Guys, U-Turn is on here because initially this was Roost. I had it as Roost, and about 10 minutes before the game, I switched it over to U-Turn. Because I felt like getting, getting momentum on especially his Hydreigon and his Mega Gardevoir would be very useful. But, this was initially Roost. And the reason it was Roost was because I wanted to be able to take hits from his Scizor if it wasn't fully physically invested and set up on it. Uh, even possibly alongside it if it was a um, if it was Swords Dance, but 
Uh, I switched it out for U-Turn because Jar said, well, you can run Dragon Dance with U-Turn. That's that's not a problem. And I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Uh, and as I removed it, uh, as I removed Roost and switched it out for U-Turn, I said, I'm probably going to regret this, but whatever. I, I probably won't. It, it won't end up mattering. And that was that, and I, I left it as U-Turn. Next up, we have Mega Deancey with... Uh, I'm actually rocking a lot of HP and uh, a little bit of special attack investment. That's because I'm a Calm Mind variant, and after a Calm Mind, Slowbro, uh, with no investment, cannot 2-hit KO me with Scald uh, because of my HP. And the special attack is more than enough to take out the things that I need to take out. Uh, Nido Queen's not getting a, a one shot by Psy Shock anyway, so I might as well just make a two shot. Moonblast already takes out High Dragon. It already takes out his... Um, his Terrakion after rock, so it really doesn't matter uh, that I'm only running this much of attack, because as you can see, DNC still hits a monstrous special attack of 369, and then the speed, of course, is to outspeed max speed Terrakion. Uh, had I run in Power Fire on this set, I would have been able to hit the Scizor, because otherwise I cannot hit it, uh, but I needed something to hit the Needle Queen, or else it completely walled me, so uh, that was why I ran Psy Shock. Finally, we have Heavy Metal Pokemon, so Delmize, Assault Vest, uh, pretty standard set, actually. Anchor Shot, Power Whip, Earthquake, and Rapid Spin, the typical set that you see. This is kind of a backup check to his Gardevoir. If his guard thinks that it can come in and uh, knock me out with either a Psy Shock or a, uh, a Hyper Voice from a certain range, and I forget what that range is, but if it thinks that it can come in and revenge me, it's going to get destroyed by an Anchor Shot. And from full, I can easily take High Dragon's um, either Life Orb or even Specs Dark Pulse because of the, uh, the Assault Vest. And uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty standard. I wanted to, to have a way to get rid of Hazards because my Sash, uh, this thing was super important as well. And I didn't want my Flygon getting chipped because it was one of my setup mons. So that's why I ran this. So it's pretty simple. Um, let's get right into the battle and I'll show you guys how it went down. So uh, I didn't make a cut. Uh, we're already in the battle. Here it is. We are against um, Rob. I might have cut it just to readjust the, uh, the dimensions on the battle. But uh, anyway, so as you can see, uh, why is this like this? Uh, it should have been the other way around. Hold on. Uh, we're going to switch sides and reset. All right. So as you can see, he brought the Swallow, the Scizor, the Slowbro, the Hydreigon, the uh, Terrakion, and the Tornadus. Now, I did not expect uh, to not see Mega Gardevoir, but it makes sense that it didn't come because in our last game, it did nothing. All it did w was weaken my Kyurem Black. Uh, and I had the Babiri Berry. Uh, sorry, no, I had the Roselli Berry, and I was able to hit it with an Iron Head. So... Uh, knowing that, I made, it kind of made sense that his Gardevoir didn't come, and I knew that Torn was also a huge problem to my team, and so was Swallow. Like, flying spam against me is ridiculous, especially when Swallow gets Steel Wing for Deancey, and, uh, Tornadus gets Iron Tail. So, uh, I was in a little bit of a pickle against his flying types. But I, I knew that Swallow would be his most likely lead, and even if it wasn't, I had coverage for every other member on his team with my Aselgor. So, I'm gonna lead off with Aselgor, he's gonna lead off with Swallow. So, I'm in here, and I'm thinking, okay, well, let me just get off a of Focus Blast. Please connect this time, and it does. So, I get it down to 8%, and this is actually bad for me, guys, that this is a, at 8%, because you guys are going to see later, but I'll explain when we get there. Uh, he's going to go for a Boom Burst. He's going to bring me down to my Sash, obviously, because he's Specs, and I'm just going to go for a U-turn here, pretty safe U-turn. He's going to switch out into his Tornadus, which can easily take any one of my hits, and we are going to get out of here. And uh, I'm going to go straight into my Rotom Heat. So Rotom gets a free Volt Switch off right here. He actually goes for a Focus Blast as uh, I go for a Will-O-Wisp and I burn this uh, Tornadus. Not sure why he had Focus Blast exactly, probably for my Kiram. But uh, anyway, uh, he's going to now go for a U-Turn. I can very easily just go for a Volt Switch right here. Uh, I didn't want to go for a Pain Split because I was afraid he would go into Swallow and that would be a bad time. Uh, so I'm just going to Volt Switch out on his Eye Dragon. I see 15%. I'm thinking, okay, so it's not very defensive. I can just go out into my Selgor, threaten this thing out, and I can just U-turn again. Uh, as now he's going to go back into his Torn, and I am going to get off the U-turn. So I'm keeping up momentum. This is good. And I'm going to uh, go out into my Deancey now because I've seen Focus Blast. I'm pretty convinced that he doesn't have uh, any move to hit Deancey with. So I'm just going to bring it in, and I'm going to Mega Evolve, and he's going to go for a U-turn. Safe play, very good play. As I am just going to fire off a Moon Blast right here as he goes out into... Uh, sorry, I'm going to get up my Stealth Rocks. I didn't explain this, but uh, Deancey is my Stealth Rocker this game. So I'm going to get up my Rocks. They're going to pressure his team a lot. And they're going to kill the Swallow. <laughs> so 
yeah, about that. Uh, I'm going to switch out into Rotom now on his Scizor. He's going to go for a U-turn. Very safe play. I could have been HP Fire and severely weakened this thing, uh, but I wasn't. And he's going to go into Terrakion and make an excellent play right here, knowing that my Rotom is pressured to switch out. He's going to go for the Stealth Rocks, and now they're up on my side, which is a problem because I have a Sash of Selgor in the back. Uh, now he's going to go for a uh, Continental Crush, which I did expect him to bring, actually, on his Terrakion, but it's not going to do that much, and I'm going to be able to live the following Stone Edge, so I'm going to be able to easily get off a of Moonlight right here. He knows that, he's going to switch out into his Slowbro, and uh, he is going to, I believe, on this turn, this is a very good uh, set of plays from Rob right here, he's actually going to switch out his Slowbro into his Scizor, uh, predicting me to uh, go for an attack that I could hit his uh, Slowbro with, and right here I'm going to Psychic, uh, predicting the... Uh, no switch out from the scissor. I'm gonna catch the slow bro and he's gonna make an amazing play right here and switch out again No, sorry. He's going to stay in on my psychic and he's gonna go for a toxic now From the psychic damage. I was under the impression that he was assault vest and when I saw toxic I was like wait a minute this thing is an assault vest which means it's just rocking a lot of spadef which is a great thing for my Flygon, because if I get it set up, I can knock this thing out with a Devastating Drake. So, right here, I'm just going to, I believe, fire off another Psychic, as he makes a very nice play, goes out into High Dragon. I could have gone for the HP Bug right there, that would have been play of the century, knocked out the High Dragon, but I was afraid that he would switch out into his Scizor, and I knew Psychic would kill Slowbro. So, he catches me on that. And uh, right here, I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Bug. And once again, Rob is going to switch out into his Tornadus. So he keeps making the correct play every single time, uh, catching me, knowing that I wouldn't go for Psychic there. Excellent plays from Rob. Uh, but right here, I'm going to Moonlight up on his U-turn. The U-turn is going to do absolutely nothing because this thing is burned. And he's now going to go into Scizor. Fine with me. I get off the Moonlight, and I'm going to heal up almost back to full. But after the Toxic damage, I'm pretty low. I do want to weaken this thing, however, so I am going to go for Psychic, and I'm actually going to get a crit on that turn. Uh, Rob makes a nice play in Roosts, uh, just in case I did crit him, which was very good on his part. And now I'm just going to switch out my Necrozma, because I can potentially save it for later, as he is going to go for another Roost. I figured that he would, not wanting to put his Scizor in range of Moonblast from my Deancey. So now I'm going to get it to go into my Delmize, but the problem is, right here, guys... Swallow is at 8%, so I am not going to be able to get off a Rapid Spin, which I click on this turn, forgetting that a Swallow can just be sacked, and I can't hit anything with Rapid Spin, so that's very unfortunate. This is going to give him a switch back into High Dragon. Now, this entire time, remember, I'm Assault Vest, uh, and I know that this thing is probably offensive. This entire time, I'm fearing Flash Cannon for my life, and I do not want to switch in my Deancey. But switching into my Deancey here would have probably been the correct play. I do outspeed Slowbro, so I would have been able to get off a Rapid Spin later in the game. But instead, I sack off my Delmize. So this was a horrible play on my part. I could have easily switched into Deancey, knowing that he had to knock out Delmize uh, for later in the game. If I, at any point I got off a Rapid Spin, this game shifted completely. So, because now my, ro my Rotom is severely pressured. It's at 48% and rocks are up. So, I'm in trouble. I bring in Deancey here. I'm just going to go for a Moonblast. Again, Rob is going to go straight into his Scizor nonchalantly, even though I can easily go for an HP Fire. Uh, I don't know if we saw an item on this thing. Is it Leftovers? It is not, so it's probably uh, Aka Berry. Here I sack off my Selgor, knowing that I'm never going to be able to get, off, uh, get rocks off the field. And uh, I'm going to go straight into my Rotom. Uh, once again, Rob making a superb play, switching out into his High Dragon, who is now weakened, so that I, I don't get almost any health back from Pain Split. So, very good on him. Uh, I am going to heal up to 38. I can still switch in on Rocks once, uh, but I am going to sack off my Rotom to the Dark Pulse. So, uh, not great, but now I get to go into my Deancey. His High Dragon is at 20%, so I expect him to sack it here, which he does, so I just go for another Moonblast. Not that I can click anything else, anyway. He's going to go into Scizor here, and uh, I actually question this play a little bit, because if Deancey stayed alive, I could have very easily knocked out the remainder of his team. Uh, and I could have easily switched out here as well, into my Necrozma and sacked it, and I didn't want him roosting up. So I just went for a Moonblast, and he went for a Bullet Punch, so good on him to go for that. Uh, but now I'm going to go on to my Flygon, and here's the chance, guys. Here's my chance to go for a Dragon Dance. The problem is, two bullet punches from Max Attack, Scizor, does knock me out. So, it's going to be it's gonna be in vain. I'm going to go for the Dragon Dance. Uh, he's going to go for the Super Power, and lower his own attack, and he only does 53% to me with the Super Power. Revealing to me that he only has about 180 attack investment roughly. I haven't watched his video I don't know exactly how much he has, but if I had roost right here 
If I hadn't switched it for U-turn, I would have been able to roost up on this turn and been so healthy that I could have knocked out the remainder of his team. His Scizor comes back in at 33. His Slowbro is sitting at, uh, after rocks, about 40... Uh, hold on. 43%. And his uh, Tornadus cannot take a Devastating Drake. So if I would have kept Roost, I would have been able to win right here. But he's going to switch out. He's going to go into Starachion and sack it to the Earthquake uh, that I go for. And he's going to bring back in his Scizor. And this is still a roll to kill, by the way, guys. It is a roll heavily in his favor, but it's still a roll to kill on the Bullet Punch. If I had any kind of HP investment, uh, I probably wouldn't have died to the combination of Super Power plus Bullet Punch, and I would have been able to sweep through his team. But he does get the roll, and uh, the, I admit, look, it's it's a roll. It, uh, it should be uh, that he gets it because it was a roll heavily in his favor, like I said. Here he's going to roost, making his best play. And uh, on the following turn, he's going to knock out my Necrozma. So, uh, kudos to Rob. He made majors. I did not, uh, which is kind of why I delayed this game as well, uh, uploading it. I was uh, convinced that I wasn't going to return for NPL Miners for next season, guys, because it's a, it's a long road. It's uh, I have to make top three in Miners to excel to majors, and then I have to play in majors. So, I have to go through a full another season before I can even have another season after that where I have a chance of winning a title. So, uh, by then they'll already be in season, what is it, uh, eight, I believe, because they're currently in season six. So, uh, it's going to be a long way. I was initially not going to do it because I'm going to be moving on to different leagues as well. Uh, if I win the GPC championship, uh, I am going to be uh, ending it there and not participating again next season. I will remain as an admin, and I will help out as much as I can, but if I win the championship, the trend is that the winner does not stick around. So, uh, Rob left after Season 4, Merc left after Season 5, and I would leave after Season 6, and even if Zaza wins, uh, he's still leaving anyway, so we gotta keep up with the trend, man. Uh, but I was initially not going to re-participate in Miners because of all of those factors, all of the new leagues that are coming up uh, for me. Uh, all of the new content that you guys are going to see. I got a capture card as well, so you guys are going to start getting some Wi-Fi content. Hopefully, uh, I can get working on that. I still need to um, get some stuff done. But anyway, the point is, um, yeah, I wasn't going to participate in Miners again next season. I had already said in the chat that I was going to leave. And then Mr. Anthony Zazo messages me at, I believe, 6 a.m., <laughs> as he does with everybody and asks me out of curiosity why are you uh quitting miners and i told him uh with everything that's going on uh i don't feel like i'm going to be able to be committed to it and i also feel like i'm not good enough uh because if i can't make top three in miners uh i probably can't compete with the people in majors and zazo uh nonchalantly i would say and uh with as little um, how would I put this? As little compassion as possible, uh, scientifically said that he does not believe that I am not good enough for majors. And, uh, coming from, uh, the caliber of player that Anthony Zazo, Iron Flash Gaming, is, uh, that was a huge wake-up call. That maybe I'm not so bad, because Rob, if you guys don't know, uh, actually, I'm going to shut my mouth because I don't know if that's been uploaded yet. I don't think it has, but anyway. Uh, Rob is a fantastic player. Let's just say that. He is always on the top of every ladder. He uh, he beat me twice. He, he's incredible. But I gave him a run for his money in both games. Um, definitely gave him a run for his money, and if I had not switched out Roost for U-Turn in the last 10 minutes before the game, I'm pretty confident that this would have been my game to win. So, saying that, um, I am going to stick around in minors because with the few coaches that are moving up to majors, I believe that I have an edge now. And that I am, honestly, in my own personal opinion and in Zazu's opinion, top three in minors. Easily. So I should make it into majors next season. Man, if I would have just never left in the first place. Oh, this would have been a lot easier. But I'm making it difficult for myself. Uh, I placed 
not well in the, the minors uh, tryout tournament, but I uploaded all my games, made it into minors, had good performances regardless, uh, beat Baby Eric, who's actually, I believe, undefeated in the uh, GPC right now. Uh, did he stay undefeated? I'm checking this right now. Uh, he went 8-0. I don't think he's played his last game, but uh, he did go 8-0, and and I believe Jar forfeited to him. So yeah, he went 9-0, and and we beat him in the tryouts tournament, so I'm very confident that I am good enough to compete with a lot of the coaches in majors. Uh, even Zazo, like I've beaten Zazo in the past. He wasn't having the best season, but I have beaten him in the past. And a little unfortunate he got a crit on my Zygarde and I did not have the best prep for that game because I was convinced I was gonna lose regardless. because He was having such a good season in the NPL and I didn't prep for it enough. I didn't even mock the game, uh, a game that I should mock, that should be extremely important. And Johnny, Johnny told me, you guys know Johnny, but Johnny told me, Aster, you need to uh, have your head in the game if you want to win. Because if your heart's not there and if you're not 100% focused and committed to the league that you want to win, then you are not going to win. Uh, I excel when I'm faced up against tough opponents. Whenever I'm in front of somebody that's really tough to beat, uh, I, I, I think I do better. Uh, I prove that in the uh, minors, uh, not in the minors, in the uh, March Madness tournament against Togavor. I beat him. It was a speed tie, but that's that's something that actually Zazo uh, came to me, and that's, that's kind of the reason that he's leaving Pokemon altogether is because once you reach a certain plateau, everything comes down to mistakes and luck. Uh, when two players of the exact same caliber are facing off against each other and two very highly skilled players It's always gonna come down to luck. You look at the game between Gypsy and uh, Gypsy King and Iron Flash Gaming, Zazo, in the NPL in season 6 this season and it came down to hacks and it was such a close game. It was a ridiculously co a close game, but that's what's always gonna happen. There's always gonna be a slight luck factor. If you go through an entire game without uh, ever getting anything but a mid roll and never getting any sort of hacks on any one of your moves or a crit or anything that is a miracle that doesn't happen so when it comes to skilled players that are facing off against each other you have um, you have this this line uh, that's created between the two of you and it's only crossed when certain factors uh, are initiated like hacks so I understand uh, where Zazu is coming from leaving, and I think he makes a good point as to why I should not leave Miners. And uh, I, he, I mean, ultimately, he doesn't care what ends up happening to the NPL, but he does, he didn't agree that I wasn't good enough. So I'm gonna honor that. And these are Zazu's dying. Everything that Zazu says from like here till like a month from now are like his dying wishes for when he's leaving Pokemon. Like I really hope he wins. Uh, this season of the NPL because he deserves it. He's played amazing. He's lost like two games. He's lost like two, three games in Gen 7 um, Other than the March Madness tournament, which we won't count because yeah uh, Aki VGC, but Zazo is incredible and uh, I owe a lot to this kid uh, for For making me a better player uh, In the first place like when I joined the GPC my first match was against him and I won and ever since I've had this I've had this on and off feeling like I'm not good enough and I always go back to that game I always remember those last few plays that toxic from Klefki onto his Garchomp everything and Winning that game the one with Mega Gardevoir and Zapdos left I hope you guys remember that one But like that was that was the game that started this for me and started this journey for me And I really wish I would have stayed in NPL majors because I could have definitely hung with some of the guys in there uh, I'm, I'm still in the chat regardless if I'm leaving or not which I'm not now But if I was leaving I would still hang around in the chat because I've met some fantastic people through the NPL Everybody's so cool like Jolt, uh, Togue, Riz, Zazo, everybody like I'm, I'm not gonna start naming more and more people because there's too many to name We're something like 50 people in that server easily if not more and everybody's so awesome man everybody's so chill so this is the end of my run, guys. Uh, a little bit of a rant there at the end. Sorry about that. You had to stare at a scissor. Uh, but this scissor was the biggest pain in my ass this game, okay? It was the most annoying thing to me. Uh, and it ended up winning him the game. So, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I drafted a team 
that was completely out of my realm of experience. Uh, playing with this kind of offense, you guys look at my team, like, I don't have true walls. I don't have anything with reliable recovery on this team outside of Flygon with Roost. Like, it's, re and I guess Necrozma with Moonlight, but, like, the synergy between the team was just not there. And I was still able to make playoffs and lose to one of the best players uh, the game has ever seen. So, I think that speaks volumes for... Uh, for me as a player and I hope that I can carry this confidence into the next season of the NPL minors uh, Congrats to everybody that made it into majors. Uh, you guys don't know who they are yet because they haven't uploaded their final games yet but uh, Congrats to all of you and also congratulations to everybody that made playoffs everybody that participated this season You guys all did amazing uh, Keep up the good work keep playing hard Honestly, uh, it's what I said in my goodbye speech in the uh, in the miners chat. I was like, okay guys, I'm leaving. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to Trev for organizing and bye. And uh, I changed my mind within a day. I'm 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 very uh, I'm very bipolar like that. I guess you could say. But yeah, guys, uh, that's that wraps it up. Uh, thank you all for your patience with me with my uploads. Thank you for listening to my rants. Uh, thank you for supporting me, leaving likes, uh, leaving comments. Okay, like comments. When I get notif notifications on my phone for comments on my YouTube videos, I check them immediately and I'm like, oh my god, uh, let me see what somebody said about this. It's always funny and positive comments and like the odd like uh, telling me what I should have done better. And I really like those, like especially the ones where people are like, you probably should have played this differently. Uh, I know Rob's going to comment on this video when he ends up watching it. Uh, I want to apologize for not getting this up sooner because you did have yours up on time. And the only reason that I didn't upload this earlier was because I really felt like I wasn't going to continue in the NPL minors. But uh, you deserve more credit than that, my friend, because uh, you are an amazing player. And I should not frown upon myself for having lost to you, even though I felt like I could have won. So either way, uh, kudos to Rob. Good job, dude. You did you did amazing. Uh, keep keep playing the way you've been playing and. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, as always, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you enjoy my rants. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.